Hey everyone! So it's the end of September. ERAS is opening a little later this year. Um, I believe programs can start viewing applications on October 21st. I thought I'd just offer a couple of tips uh, based on my own application experience, um, especially in family medicine, especially going through the couples match, though obviously some of these tips can apply regardless of whether you're doing those things. My first tip is a little specific to family medicine, but I think there's some lessons that can be learned for any specialty, and that is to tailor your program list aggressively. When I was applying, the AAFP's recommendations were to apply to 17 programs, interview at 12, and rank 10 to maximize your chances of matching. Even though I was couples matching, I applied to 26 programs, I believe. I ended up getting about 17 interviews. I accepted and attended 14 of those interviews, and then I ended up ranking 12 programs. I think especially in this virtual application cycle, the pressure to apply to as many programs as you can is really high, especially because you don't have to travel so much. And I think it is reasonable to apply to more programs this year than you might in a non-virtual application season in a non-pandemic year. Um, but I still think, especially for family medicine, it does not make sense to apply to 40 programs or 50 programs. For me, when I was doing in-person interviews, after the ninth or 10th interview, I was pretty tired. Even with interviews being virtual, it just doesn't make sense to attend so many interviews. Now, because you can afford to be so aggressive with your application list, especially in family medicine, you can really tailor your list of programs to be specific to you. Do you want to apply only in a specific corner of the country? You can absolutely do that. Do you want to focus on programs that have fellowships in geriatrics? or that send a resident to a sports medicine fellowship every year, or that focus on underserved populations, or that focus on rural medicine, or that have high volume OB, or that do global health. You can really pick any of those factors and create a list that really excites you and has programs that you feel like you could really thrive in for your particular career goals. A lot of current residency applicants are asking me what I wish I would have known going into interview season. I think more than anything, you deserve to be in your specialty and you deserve to be surrounded by people who support you and are excited about you and just happy that you're there with them. I know that I was really worried about looking good or being impressive. I came out of the interview season feeling much better about myself, about my career, about the field of family medicine in general and all the people I would be working with in the future. Even though me telling you not to stress is not going to stop you from stressing, I think if I had known how uplifting the family medicine interview cycle would be, I would have felt much more comfortable and much more confident in submitting my application. And I think the whole process would have just been much less stressful for me. Make sure that you know your application forwards, backwards, and inside out. You might get asked about the most random thing on your application, especially if it's about hobbies, non-medical things, or more specific interests like in women's health or in advocacy or free clinic work. I think a good rule of thumb for figuring out which activities are best for your application is if you can't talk about it for 60 to 90 seconds, it probably doesn't belong on your application. When you're interviewing for residency, Remember that it's a two-way street, especially in family medicine, the match process really favors the applicant. Ask residents about all the little things that maybe to someone else might not be so important, but for you might be a big deal. Like for me at UC Irvine, where I live, there are four Costco's and three Trader Joe's and three 99 ranches all within a 15 minute drive of me. That plays a big role in my happiness and my ability to access the foods that I want to eat. Food, for me, is very important. And so even though that's not medically related, that's something that you can definitely ask about. Maybe you have kids 
ask residents who have kids themselves about what they do for childcare or which school districts might be best to live in. Maybe if you have a spouse or a significant other, see what local job opportunities are available and see how involved partners are in resident events. If you love running or hiking, ask about local trails and ask about big races in the area that people might participate in. You're gonna be there for several years, at least three if not more, and it's important to find a place that really resonates with you, not just in terms of the program itself, but the things around the program and the support systems that you're going to need to build to get you through residency. Create your rank order list based on what you think of the program. Too often applicants make the mistake of thinking, wow, this program really seems to like me. I should rank them higher because that way I'll have a better chance of getting in there. A lot of times that doesn't quite turn out the way you think it will. Now, I feel like there aren't a lot of tips about couples matching, so because I have some experience going through the couples match myself, I figured I should share some tips and things that I learned during my own couples match process. The first thing to know about couples matching is that you are definitely not alone in this. When I was interviewing, I met quite a few people who one was applying in family medicine and one was applying in another specialty, and I even met quite a few people where, like us, both partners were going into family medicine. So it's definitely not a one in a million type of thing. If I could give just one piece of advice to people who are couples matching, it would be to have tough conversations early. This is kind of a test of your relationship and you're going to need to maintain open and frequent communication throughout. Some of the questions to think about might include, how far apart are you willing to be? How many hours drive? How many hours flight? How many time zones? What is the point at which you would rather be far away from each other at two programs that you both love rather than closer to each other but at two programs that you're both kind of meh about? At what point would you rather both not match than both match at programs that you both dislike? One of the possible combinations you can put in is to have one partner match and one partner not match. Is that an option that you're willing to consider? Those are some of the tough questions that you're gonna have to start thinking about and talking about with your partner. Show them this video if you want and tell them that I told you to talk about tough stuff. It really helps you figure out where your priorities are and what you value in your relationship. Presumably you're going into the couples match because you feel that it's more important to be together than to be at your favorite, best, most amazing programs. A lot of couples don't match in a way that they're satisfied with. Be prepared for the worst, be flexible, talk with each other, and hopefully things will work out well for you. A few other things that I would recommend doing is make your own individual rank order list before you sit down with your partner and start making all those rank order combinations. If you and your partner are both interviewing in the same specialty, that can make things a little tougher. Personally, for my partner and me, let's say I interviewed at a program on November 1st and my partner wasn't interviewing there until December 15th. After my interview, I might tell him some of the positive and cool things that I learned about that program or some of the things that I didn't know about that program before I showed up there. So that way my partner could be a little more prepared for that interview and also have some specific positive details to talk about. Then if I had any negative impressions from that program, I would save those until after he finished his interview on December 15th. Then we would both sit down and compare our impressions and see if we both got the same kind of vibe from a program. One tool that I found critical as a starting point for making our couples rank order list was a website called mactiontools.com slash couples match. I'll put that up on the screen here. Um, that website is amazing. You basically put in your own rank order list, your partner puts in their rank order list, and then you click a button and it spits out a spreadsheet that shows you all of the combinations you can sort by rank, uh, like the average of your rank and your partner's rank. We chose to sort our spreadsheet by distance and that provided the best starting point for us to then move different combinations around and figure out what our ultimate uh, two column rank order list was going to look like. I have made a few other videos about my own experience going through the residency application and interview process and I'll link those in the corner. Um, but for now, those are some of my general tips um, going into this 
strange virtual residency application cycle. I hope that they're helpful and I hope particularly for those of you applying into family medicine or for those of you who are couples matching, this video might offer some useful tips that you can take with you. Hope that helps and see you in the next video.